Hello everyone, welcome to Marvel's Midnight Suns. Now I've just completed a playthrough of this game and I thought I'd share some tips and hints on what might be useful for a beginner or anyone who's new to this game just to enhance your gameplay and experience as well as understanding of the game itself. So without further ado, let's get things started. When I first started playing Marvel's Midnight Suns, I made the mistake of believing that all superheroes are equal in the sense that the only differentiator is the type of cards they have, attacks, the animation, but none of them were actually drastically good at offense and none were drastically good at defense or anything else. As I played more of it, I realized actually no, um, they actually have specializations in a sense that is true to their comic book counterparts. So for example, Spider-Man is a superhero that utilizes his environment a lot. And so his cards and his play actually reflect that. Wanda is very much about area of effect damages or even support spells. So bearing that in mind is important. The reason is it affects other things that you might want to do in the game. For example, when you come to your daily sparring session, every sparring session provides a reward to your superhero or your partner, your training partner. In this case, the reward will be plus 10 power, which increases the size of area abilities. Now, if you know what kind of superhero you're building, if I play to their strengths, for example, I would potentially choose Wanda because she is more of an AOE character or even Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel has a skill that pretty much shoots a ray out of her hand and the bigger that area of effect is, the more enemies I can hit in one go. So that's important because if I select this, this increases her stat. And so she has a new value of 30, new percentage is 7.5%. So that's handy in helping not only specialize your characters further, but making them more powerful and playing to their strengths. One of the things I was never good at in Marvel's Midnight Suns, but I slowly got better throughout the gameplay, is actually keeping to the objective and completing the objective. So we we'll use this example where the mission is to recover supplies and the objective is break the enemy protection to access the trucks and use the recover supplies card to secure the supplies. It sounds pretty simple. Now, as we wait for this mission to get set up, I'll explain why I made, I made the mistake. So when I see the mission, I guess, coming into play in front of me on the screen, I get overwhelmed with the number of enemies. And I get concerned that if I don't deplete the number of enemies available, I'm gonna get killed, uh, I won't be able to complete the mission, and so on and so forth. But what I found over time is if I just stick to the mission objectives and try to pretty much just complete them and not focus too much on how many enemies you have, it will allow me to actually Successfully, successfully complete the mission because what I found is once I complete the objectives I either stop enemy reinforcements from appearing and therefore I can just defeat the enemies that are remaining or in some cases even better completing the objective just stops the whole thing then and there the whole mission it's, it's just a success even if you have a gazillion enemies still undefeated it doesn't matter you've succeeded so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly play through this mission and show you what it looks like. I'm going to fast forward it so that you don't have to go through the grind that I've been through. As you see, or as you saw, I recovered the supplies from both trucks and now the objective has changed and I just have to defeat the remaining enemies. Now I no longer have to worry about reinforcements. So as you can see, completing the objectives does help you complete the mission more effectively, so to speak, and you don't have to be worried about being too overwhelmed. So I'm just going to quickly complete this mission and that'll be it. Yeah. 
As you play Marvel's Midnight Suns, you will find that you favor some heroes over the other just because their mechanics are more fun or they're just better in dealing damage or supporting each other. And you'll find that at some point, their levels aren't keeping up with the rest of the superheroes. For example, most of them are 23, 22 now. Blade is 20. I haven't really played him a lot. Doctor Strange as well. And Nico is also 20. I might be concerned, or you might be concerned that, okay, I need to then catch them up. I'm forced to play them through the missions that you have to complete in Marvel's Midnight Sun. So it's either a story mission or a general mission slash side mission. But you don't have to do that. At some point, you will unlock this portal called the Threat Room, as you can see the bottom left, T-H-R-E-A-T Room. And basically, when you enter this room, you can use any hero to enter, and they can fight, and they can level up. Now, obviously, the highest level they can gain is the highest level that any of your heroes currently has. So if at the moment it says my current highest, highest hero level is 23, if I were to use Doctor Strange to go into it, for example, I would potentially be able to level up from 20, maybe to 23, depends how well I do. Maybe just 21, 22, but I can repeat it. I can do it every day or any as many times as I want just to get them up if that's what you feel like. So don't feel like you have to force them to play them in any story mission or general mission. Just to level them up, you can always come to this threat room and do that at any time. You'll find that you can actually fast travel. I didn't realize this when I was playing the game. So first thing when you click on tab or M, when you're in the Abbey, you only get to this map. You want to see the wider map and that's actually called the grounds. So the short key actually is F. Once I hit F, I can see all the grounds. Now you unlock over time if you explore the grounds, points of interest and also fast travel points. So holding down on E will able to enable you to fast travel to this location, in this case, Dreamer's Descent. But also, just one thing you might not notice, I just did that there without realizing, is when you want to fast travel to the Abbey, there is no diamond shape image for you to hover over and then fast travel. Actually, the whole Abbey, if you just hover over it, you can see that to the right, it's already actually a fast travel point. Just in case you didn't know and you've already traveled, let's say, down to Stone Terrace, and you want to come back, just hover over it and you're back here. Marvel's Midnight Suns has a game mode called New Game Plus. This game mode is similar to a lot of other RPG games, which becomes available once you complete the story mission in the first playthrough. Once you've done that, you get to carry over progression from your previous playthrough. So for example, in Marvel's Midnight Suns, previously unlocked heroes are available from game start. All regions, mission types, and villains are available for the entire campaign, and hero requirements are removed from previously completed research projects. From here, when you start the game, you can actually then select what do you actually want to carry over. The hero abilities, the friendship levels, resources, and cosmetics. I think this is pretty handy because when I first, when I completed my first playthrough, I didn't actually achieve all my friendship levels. But at the same time, it felt, I guess, repetitive to just complete it for the sake of it when I've already completed the story mission or storyline. So I think then starting a new game and trying out different tactics, mechanics, while then being able to carry over a lot of these things that you already completed is actually a very, very handy game mode to have. The final tip I'd like to share is about Agatha's Cauldron. Now, before I show you where and what Agatha's Cauldron is, I want to explain the reasons why I found this important. Now, when you're playing the game, you will need to upgrade your abilities. Once you have duplicate copies, you want to make them stronger. So upgrading them makes them stronger abilities or cards. And when you upgrade them, depending on what type of ability it is, in this case, you have attack ability, you have a skill ability, and you have a heroic ability. They all require essence, as you can see. Attack essence, 60 attack essence for gamma kick, and 100 skill essence for always angry, and then 120 heroic essence for mighty blow. Now, I don't have enough for gamma kick attack essence, and I don't have enough heroic essence either. Throughout my gameplay, what I did to make up for this essence is I would try to collect duplicate copies. As you can see here, I might have, if I go to the Hunter, I've got all these extra cards. And if I were to salvage them, as you can see at the bottom, it says if I salvage, I'll get 166 Heroic Essence. So that's what I was doing throughout the gameplay. 
But that's because I actually didn't explore the grounds. And when I say grounds, it's actually the area outside the abbey. Here, all these extra waypoints and side quests you could do. When you explore them, you unlock a quest that basically allows you to then access Agatha's Cauldron. And the cauldron is right here. This cauldron allows you to craft combat items. It allows you to also craft essence, and this is what we need. Now you can also complete or gather essence from completing missions, but if not, you can actually go around the grounds, collect all the materials ingredients, as well as the corresponding recipes, and craft all the essence. And this is pretty this is really good as a, another source of essence, basically. You can also use the cauldron to transmute your essence from one to another. If you have Wondergore's Everbloom in this example, you can transmutate 25 heroic essence into 50 skill essence. So that's pretty handy. You get more out of the same, so long as you have the ingredients. So that's one thing I'd like to share because I didn't get access to this until I finished the whole game.